Hey everyone, it's your pal Sully again, giving you a bonus episode here, both on video and in the audio feed. This is October 24th, 2022. And for those of you who've been following my podcast from before I was at Lockdown MLB, you'll know that October 24th, 2012 was a very special day for me as podcaster. And I couldn't let this day go by without celebrating it. This was Sully Baseball. Now it's locked on MLB. You are locked on MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast we talk about all of Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. I am an Emmy-nominated television producer who has been podcasting for well over a decade, and we're going to be talking about that today on this, which is a special bonus episode of Locked On MLB. Hey, um, you can follow us at Locked On MLB on Twitter, and Instagram at Lockdown MLB Pods. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. This is a bonus episode, which I'm dropping here on the 24th day of October 2022. And for those of you who have been following my podcast from before my Lockdown MLB days when I was the Sully Baseball Podcast, um, this is a special day for your pal Sully because, well, it's a very special anniversary. I've been a podcaster for quite a while now, and on October 24th, 2012, I embarked on a really, really ambitious journey as a podcaster, and I think while I haven't hit exactly what I was hoping to hit, I can honestly say that I've been able to do a, well... (laughs) have the most fun creatively I've ever had in my life. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I was, uh, for many years, I was a stand-up comic living in New York and in the San Francisco Bay Area. I did comedy both places there. I was a television producer, as I mentioned. Some of the shows I worked on were very successful. Uh, Probably the biggest one I ever worked on. I was a producer on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart for a little bit. I worked on many other talk shows, reality shows, things like that. I was a filmmaker, a film I directed, ended up in a few movie theaters and some festivals and I've uh, been a performer and, and other things I've done some magazine articles I've written for baseball magazines but the most fun I've ever had creatively is doing podcasting I just love doing baseball podcasting and I had been dabbling in it for a couple of years I'd done a, I started one thing I only did a couple episodes and I bailed on it and then um I was uh, involved with seamheads.com, which was a website, and they had a weekly podcast, and I did a big, long segment at the end of their flagship show. It wasn't really my show. I just I did a lot of stuff on it, and that was a weekly thing, and I kind of, I, a lot of things in my life were, you know, I my career and everything got in the way, and doing a weekly podcast, I just didn't feel any rhythm to it. And for a while, I was thinking to myself, the only way you could do a baseball podcast is to do it every day. Just have a daily podcast because the what happens in baseball happens so so quickly. And I kicked around the idea of doing it, kicked around the idea of doing it. And then on the 24th day of October 2012, I sat down at my dining room table at the luxurious Sully Baseball Studios in Pasadena, California, overlooking the historic Rose Bowl. And it was on the eve of the 2012 World Series between the San Francisco Giants and the Detroit Tigers. This is how long ago it was. The Tigers were in the World Series. And I recorded my first podcast. And then the next day, I recorded another one. And then the next day, I recorded yet another And this continued for the next 1,622 days. Between the 24th day of October and the second day of April 2017, so for 
2012, October 2012, until April 2017. I never missed a day. Christmas did a podcast. I was in the hospital one day, did a podcast. Took a family trip, still did a podcast. Okay, I confessed a couple of times. I would bank four or five episodes, but I would drop a new podcast every single day. No repeats for 1,622 days. Now, eventually, life got in the way, and it became impractical to keep doing it. But I would still drop one. I would drop one every once in a while. One here, one there. And ultimately, I recorded on the dot 1,800 episodes of Sully Baseball. And again, life kind of got in the way, and I stopped doing it. And when Stacy Gotsoulias of Lockdown Yankees told me that the Lockdown Podcast Network, run by David Locke, was looking for a new podcaster for a flagship station, I threw my hat into the ring. And thank you to Stacy and thank you to David Locke for giving me a shot. And in the uh, beginning of the 2019 season, the show Locked on MLB, which had a previous host, I took over it and basically did what I did in the Sully Baseball Daily Podcast. I did on here. I read ads. I don't swear as much on here. Um, I don't go on as many tangents as I used to. Believe me, I used to go on more. And I've been doing now the Lockdown Podcast Network for the last four seasons. I also did a spinoff of Sully Baseball, which was a movie minute podcast called Bull Durham Minute, where we broke down the movie Bull Durham. Each minute of Bull Durham was its own episode. And that was 108 episodes of that. So between Sully Baseball Daily Podcast, Locked On MLB, and uh, the Bull Durham Minute Podcast, I have done, I have personally hosted 2,000, 849 podcasts. This is 2,850. I have 150 more to host before I hit 3,000. But this day was always a very special day on the old Sully Baseball Daily Show because it was the anniversary. How many years in a row can I do this? Can I do it straight? And while I didn't quite get to 3,600 or something that I promised where I do 365 new shows a year, Unless there's a leap year, then we're going to do another one. But alas, I feel like we did something special anyway. And I wanted to celebrate that. And one way I'm going to celebrate that is we're going to go back in time. And I am going to play for you, after the break, the first Sully Baseball Daily Show recorded on October 24th, 2012 from my dining room table a lot was different back then and maybe i've gotten better maybe i sound really similar there was no video of it there so i'll just have the logo but alas i fit you may be able to have some fun listening to this and i hope you do so when we come back we will listen to me exactly 10 years ago at my dining room table Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Sully Baseball Daily, where every day I come on and talk baseball for 20 minutes, 365 days a year, unless there's a leap year, then we're doing another one. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. I've created Sully Baseball and I've been working on it since 2006, and since then I've done a bunch of videos. I did a podcast for on Blog Talk Radio for Seamheads.com. I've written for Hardball Times. I've written for the USA Today. I've written for a Bleacher Report, which I do a daily report there as well. And I'm going to be coming back and doing some more videos and doing some more projects pretty soon. But I realized something. I realized that I love talking about baseball every single day. Every day. And a lot of times I'll have long conversations with nobody. Nobody. I'll talk in the shower. I'll talk in the car. I'll talk after I drop my kids off from school. And I'll have these long, in-depth baseball conversations with the air or with birds or sometimes squirrels who scurry by. 
And I figured if I'm going to have some of those conversations and have some of these thoughts, I might as well share them with you. So you can listen to me every day, talk a little baseball, go through some of my ideas, go through some of my points, and maybe some of these are better expressed not on my blog that I write every day. Check me out at sullybaseball.com or every day on Bleacher Report. Check me out in my full name, Paul Francis Sullivan. But I want to talk to you right now. I'm in your ear. You're working out. You're going to the you work, you have your iPod on, every day I'm going to give you a little dose of Sully, a little dose of Sully baseball. And don't think I'm not going to do this every day. Just try me. Well, today's the first day I'm doing this. So welcome, welcome aboard. Subscribe if you want. I'm going to be on iTunes after I do a few of these. Please say a couple of nice things about me. Uh, and if any of you have any questions or any other topics you want me to talk about or bring up, by all means, email info at sullybaseball.com. I will talk about any team. I will talk about any subject. You want to talk instant replay? There should be more of it. You want to talk about performance-enhancing drugs? Uh, I love them. I don't know. <laughs> it depends on the situation. Uh, you want to talk about Hall of Fame that's coming up? I've always been a Jack Morris supporter. I understand the numbers against them. I just love them. I know that's an emotional argument. Guess what? That sometimes happens. And I'm going to try to keep them condensed, try to keep this to 20 minutes so I don't just ramble on and on. Although, do you know what? I could ramble for an hour, but that's not the point. So, Every day I'm going to be coming on here, talk a little bit about baseball, and talk a little bit about my thoughts. And today is a big day. It is October 24th, 2012, and it is the first day of the World Series. And I'm really excited uh, because this is the San Francisco Giants are my second favorite team. I'm a Boston Red Sox fan, always will be. Um, not a lot to cheer about this year. But the Giants are my second favorite team. I lived in the Bay Area for many, many years, uh, both my high school years and shortly after my children were born. My father is a rabid San Francisco Giant fan, and I'd love to see them win it again. And that's, that's who I'm rooting for. Does that mean that's who I'm picking? Well, I'll get to that in a second. These playoffs have been kind of strange. Uh, they started off great. I mean, all four of the division series were fantastic. All four of them had great come-from-behind rallies and blown saves and extra inning wins and the, the A's coming back on the verge of elimination only to lose to Verlander. The Orioles showing the guts in those extra inning games against uh, the Yankees were incredible. The uh, Giants' um, amazing comeback where they were essentially one swing away from – or from losing, if one of the Cincinnati Reds players hits a home run in the bottom of the ninth inning of game three, the Giants are swept. Then they're completely forgotten they were in the playoffs. And, of course, the poor Washington Nationals. Holy Phil Esposito. I mean, the fact that they were one strike away over and over again, That is what that was was a great condensed introduction to baseball for Washington fans to say, here's your first contending year, Washington fans. Here's your first division title. Here's your first chance at a great team. Now you're experiencing that joy. Now let me show you what pain feels like. And that Cardinal comeback where you know Davey Johnson was sitting in the dugout looking at the Cardinals celebrating, thinking, oh, so this is what the 1986 World Series felt like for the Red Sox. Uh, you have the A's, who are the single most entertaining story in all of baseball. Uh, I was a little heartbroken that they didn't advance, but man, what a great, great story they were, and such an exciting team. And you know what? If they had gotten past the Tigers, the way the Yankees were playing, I think they would have killed the Yankees. But that's neither here nor there. Then you get to the LCS, and the LCS were weird. I think we can agree that they were weird. On the one hand, you had one series that was a sweep, and another series had a team come back from a three-game-to-one deficit. That being said, the sweep was infinitely more interesting than the team coming back from the three-game-to-one deficit. Well, let me explain my thoughts here. Which one do you think had the most attention? 
Which one do you think got the most attention from people? Was it the Giants rallying back from 3-1? Or was it the sweep of the Yankees? Now, notice how I phrased that. I didn't phrase that the Tigers sweep of the Yankees. It was the sweep of the Yankees. If you just listened to talk radio, read blogs, and, and listened to other podcasts and everything like that, you almost wouldn't hear who the team that won the ALCS was named. The, the Tigers were not the story. The Tigers were not what made that a fascinating ALCS. Nobody has talked about the Tigers absolutely, if you will, mauling the Yankees. Instead, it was the destruction, the honey boo boo level train wreck that was the Yankees. That's all anyone talks about. No one gives any credit to the Tigers pitching or to their hitting. All of it falls on the lap of the incompetence of the Yankees in that series, of which Yankee fans are are now just dismissing the fact that they won the division, 95 games, they beat the Orioles in a dramatic division series, which they probably should have lost, but they didn't lose. I love it when people say they should have lost it. I say, yeah, maybe they should have, but they didn't. They won it. But they get no credit for that whatsoever. The Tigers... Aren't mentioned. It reminds me of the way the Marlins, when they beat the Cubs in the the Steve the infamous Steve Bartman series, almost no one brings up the name the Marlins when they recap that. It's always that the Cubs lost. The Cubs lost to somebody. The Yankees got absolutely humiliated in the ALCS, and to the point where it's it could be the end of an era in New York. But I digress a little bit there. The Tigers are in. And the Tigers are in because, unlike the Yankees, they were built for the postseason. They may not have been the best regular season team. And you're going to see this more and more. You saw this when the Phillies won the World Series in 2008. You saw this when the Giants won the World Series in 2010. And when St. Louis won the World Series last year that it sometimes is the team that's better built for a short series as opposed to the team that's better built for the long haul. Maybe that was the problem the Atlanta Braves had all those years when they kept making the postseason but kept losing to other teams. They obviously were the superior team in the regular season almost every single year they were in the postseason. Well, Detroit has figured out, okay, we... Got in the dance, and boy, boy, what the White Sox must be thinking as they held the lead as recently as, what, a week a week to go in the season? Then, then they lost that division. The Tigers are now in the World Series and are favored to win the whole dang thing. And they've got the good, great starting pitcher right at the top in Verlander. They've got the solid lineup with the two pieces right in the middle of it. And they seemed better designed to win three out of five games, four out of seven games, then maybe a team like the Yankees, who seem designed to win 90-some-odd regular season games by bludgeoning other teams' three, four, and five starters and their middle relievers with their power. But when you put them in a playoff situation, you see what you got. But, so we got the Tigers in there. The the this, But no one talked about the nobody talked about the Tigers when they recapped that. Because what, what, was, what was all the big talk? The talk was the Yankees are panicking. That the Girardi panics. Uh, A-Rod being benched. Jeter being injured and his career in jeopardy. The booze at Yankee Stadium. The empty seats at Yankee Stadium. A-Rod hitting on some Australian babe. Robinson Cano not hitting. Benching Granderson. Uh, starting Brett Gardner at leadoff. Girardi punishing players. Uh, CeCe Sabathia stinking. I mean, it all was about the Yankees being bad. And no one could ever say, oh, could it also have been that the Tigers were good? I mean, for Yankee haters, it was Mardi Gras. 
for someone like me, who's a Red Sox fan, who doesn't have a lot to cheer this year, this was fabulous. You get to turn on and say, hey, hey, turn on the TV. Turn on the TV right now. Why? Because the Yankees are stinking. Because A-Rod's sitting on the bench with a hoodie looking like the Unabomber sitting on the bench and hitting on some Australian chick. Hey, turn it on. The, the Yankees are swinging at balls in the dirt. They're about to lose. Phil Coke is about to close them out. Phil Coke is going to look like Raleigh Fingers on the mound. I date myself by saying Raleigh Fingers, I admit. You know, so then the the... The Giants win, and I'm thrilled that the Giants won because I'm a Giant. You know, the Giants are my second favorite team, as I said before. But that LCS was weird because it was like six of the games were blowouts. And what did the the Giants, I don't have the exact number in front of me, but they, they outscored the Cardinals, what, 20 to 1 over the last three games? And they were over early. I mean, as someone rooting for the Giants, it was great. It was fun. The Hunter Pence swing that the ball hit the bat 58 times before, you know, spinning out of control. That was cool. Brandon Belt hitting a huge home run and Marco Scudero finally getting the, uh, you know, having his moment of glory. All that was great. The games themselves weren't really suspenseful. I mean, it was kind of like, oh, get this game in fast before the rain kicks in too hard. I mean, what's the great moment of that series, you're going to remember, there's no Aaron Boone moment in this. There was no uh, Andy Chavez catch to remember in this. There was no Francisco Cabrera single. It was, okay, this is a bunch of games, and Cardinals blew them out the first bunch of games, and the Giants blew them out the last bunch of games. You know, no one's, we're about to go into a World Series here. No one can claim momentum in this. I mean, the the old adage that momentum is the next day starter. You know, Verlander is the best pitcher in the in the business. The Giants are just coming off of a big series where they, you know, they've had virtually no rest. You know, I think the the Tigers learned from what happened in 2006. I don't think they're going to come out flat at all. I think they realize this is their moment. This is probably the best moment for this Detroit team to actually win a World Series because they got a lot of veterans on there. This is the best moment of things converging with Fielder and Cabrera, who won earlier with uh, the Florida Marlins, Verlander. This is this will clinch Jim Leland in the Hall of Fame, that he would have a world championship in both leagues. Uh, on the other hand, with uh, the Giants, this is a chance to cement them as... To have that spare title, the way that the 2007 title did for the Red Sox, that this is the, this is a truly terrific team that could lay claim to being a special champion more than a one-hit wonder, but doing a multiple championship team. Those are the teams that people remember. You know, across the Bay, you had Oakland uh, winning the three titles in the 70s. You know, the fact that the Tony La Russa A's never won that second title kind of hung over that team. The same thing with the Bobby Cox Braves. If they win this, this team has nothing to answer for. And I believe Bruce Bochy is going into the Hall of Fame. And this is a tremendous matchup. Now, it's not Los Angeles. It's not Boston, it's not Chicago, it's not New York, it's not Philadelphia. So you think, oh, Fox must really hate the matchup of San Francisco or Detroit. But do you know what? If they had any imagination, this would be a dream matchup. Think of the characters you have. Think of the, I mean, think of all of the different personalities on the team. You know, you have the Triple Crown winner. And his left-handed counterpart at first base and Prince Fielder, who combined weigh a thousand pounds, and they're exciting and they have a flair for the dramatic. You have Verlander, who's our best pitcher right now, who is media savvy and also, you know, has a, a you know, is, is dramatic on the mound, has a good funny sense of humor. Then you have the panda, you have Buster, you have Kane, who I said in the video looks like the kid from King of the Hill. Uh, Zito's coming around. He's got that cool kind of San Francisco mellow quality. 
You know, Pence looks like the lead singer of the Spin Doctors. You know, Lincecum is no longer a dominant starter, but you can have him coming out of the bullpen at a really cool uh, factor in games there. And you have the great, great experience of San Francisco baseball, which now has to be considered the best home field advantage. And you've got the boats out there. You've got the people waving the towels. You've got the beautiful shots. And you have Detroit coming all the way back. And, of course, all the talk of the auto industry and blah, 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 blah. And here's Detroit and the great fans they have there and the excitement they have for the Tigers. This isn't a stale story. The Yankees are a stale story. The Red Sox are a stale story. The Phillies are a stale story. This is a new, these are new cool teams that you could say, no, no, it doesn't have to be a Northeast bias. Here we go. We got the Great Lakes. We got Great Lakes bias. We got West Coast bias. This is what MLB, this is what Major League Baseball and Fox should be promoting. This should be a dream matchup of superstars, super personalities, great stadiums, great fans, great looking uniforms that look they can bring back the clips of Mays, McCovey, Marichelle, Will Clark, Kevin Mitchell. They can bring back the clips of, you know, <laughs> Hank Greenberg and Willie Horton and Al Kaline and Jack Morris and Alan Trammell and all those guys, and they, they're all wearing the same unis. It's, this should be a great series. Think of all the great stars that can come out from that. And amazingly, these two franchises have never matched up in the World Series. Not in the Ty Cobb, Christy Matthews era. Not in the Carl Hubble and Hank Greenberg era. Not in the 60s when there's the Marichelle Mays, Gaylord Perry, McCovey, and then the, the, um, you know, the Tigers had uh, McLean and, and Kaline and all them. So this is, should be looked on as a great, great matchup. So let me tell you, I am picking, I'm rooting for the Giants, but I'm picking the Tigers. I think the Tigers are going to win in seven. Now, here's what I want to see. What do I want to see in this World Series? I want to see an unlikely pitcher to throw a save, not one of the closers, an unlikely pitcher. I want to see a splashdown home run in San Francisco. I want to see the cast of the new girl freezing in Detroit. I want to see instant replay fix a blown call. I want to see one collision at home plate involving Prince Fielder, but that nobody gets hurt. I want to see all 25 active players on each roster get into at least one game. I want to see a complete game from a pitcher. I want to see Prince Fielder to have to pay for that whole home run celebration where he was like a bowling ball against the Giants when he was a brewer. I want to see Jose Valverde in at least one pressure situation. I want to see Tim Lincecum in a save situation. I want to see a starting pitcher used in a relief role. And most importantly, I want to see Barry Bonds at AT AT&T Park. Well, folks, that's what I want to see. First pitch is in less than an hour. And chances are, if you're listening to this, you already know what happened in the game. So this has been the first ever Sully Baseball daily podcast that I'm doing. I'm going to work out some of the kinks here, but I want to thank you for listening. Uh, Check me out at sullybaseball.blogspot.com. Go to Bleacher Report, type in my full name, Paul Francis Sullivan, and go to YouTube and type in Sully Baseball. This has been the Sully Baseball daily podcast. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. Well, thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for being part of this. I hope you had some fun. And uh, from that, Acorn did literally thousands of episodes uh, spring about. Uh, I'm going to post something on the old Sully Baseball feed. If you want to subscribe to that show, you can go back and listen to thousands of episodes. Some of them were about the events of that day, so it probably will be... Uh, not exactly evergreen, but there were some I did that were that were timeless, that were talked about events or memories or had interviews with people that were a lot of fun. And I hope you don't mind indulging me in this period of the year of a little going down a little bit of a sentimental journey. I'd be remiss if I didn't go back and say, hey, I tried to do something there. And while I didn't do 365 a year, For the 10 years, as I originally intended on doing, 
we came pretty close. So follow us at Lockdown MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow me. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Going back in time as we wait for the start of the World Series, this has been Lockdown MLB for the 24th day of October 2022, 10 years after that special day in my life. I am your host, as always, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.